Actually, no. It's the 31st of May, 2012. This is Five Away to Show about Western today, and the show is Gabe Rollins. Gabe, how are you? Better I couldn't now. be better. <laughs> <laughs> also on the show today is Tina Zalotti. Hi, Tina. Hello, a little frightened of Gabe. <laughs> and Brendan Mellican checking his email. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm doing good. Today on the show, we're going to talk about City Square. So we're going to talk about Star on the Street. We're going to talk about a little bit about crime, very little about crime. Uh, and a little bit. Is there Jose Canseco news? Uh, it's not really news, but I heard <clears> that he played last night with. So, like, Worcester has, like, a softball league, right? That's kind of like amateur, like, softball league. It's sure. just people, right? Sure. And he actually played last night. Uh, and he played, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he played against the team representing the district attorney's office. Really? Yeah. And I may have been told that he performed terribly. Well, playing softball. I don't know. <laughs> but it's a whole different game, right? It is a different game. It is no, a different, different game. ball, different bats. This is like Lance Armstrong trying to run a marathon. It's a totally different thing, man. It, it, I don't think it's the same. All right, so this week, I'm just wearing this hat because this week there was an unveiling of the fact that there's now a road downtown where there used to be a mall. Front Street has been pushed through. Have you been down there to look at that? I look at it all the time. What do you think? I look at it on a daily basis. How does that make you feel as a downtown resident? Uh, it makes me feel pretty good. All right. That's, that's, that's the exact. It makes me feel pretty good. But not great. Just pretty good. <laughs> okay. How much did you contribute to the knocking down of that mall? Um... I did a little bit of it with my mind, a little bit, but that's... You gave that's, a vibe. Yeah, you gave a destructive really, vibe yeah, to it. Yeah, Well, this... Anyway, so we just wanted to mention that. This is going to be a strange episode of Five Away, because usually on the show, we complain about the city, and we don't do anything to make it better. But today on the show, we have two people who do nothing but make the city better. Gabe and Tina. One, by the way, one of the most powerful people in the city of Worcester. <laughs> According to Worcester Magazine. Feel the power. <laughs> Feel it. That's I'm sitting so far away. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Start on the Street. We are. This is coming on Sunday. If you're watching this on TV, it's on Sunday. It's on the 3rd thir- of it's June? It's on Sunday the 3rd, yep, from 11 to 5. I'm being handed that. I don't think I want that. <laughs> I don't think I want it as a celebration of my city. <laughs> it's Sunday the 3rd from 11 to 5. Where Where it's, is Start on the we're Street? We're actually, it's our spring edition, which has been a very mobile edition of Start. And so we're going to be on Green Street okay. between Temple and um, Kelly Square. And this is a new place. It's a new place. It's a new demographic. It's a whole new neighborhood. Um, it's very up and coming. There's a lot of new businesses there, uh, a lot of different demographics. There's a whole Asian uh, Asian population of markets and, and folks that are down there. And then we haven't had, we haven't, we haven't gone to this part of the city before. And I think when I looked at North Main Street, it's pretty much a stone's throw away from Park Ave. So it was time to look at someplace new to move spring. Like huh. September will always be on Park Ave. It's a perfect sort of space for us to expand and contract depending on, yes. on what we need. But it's always nice that because Start can be mobile is to, to try out new neighborhoods. And they actually, you know, when I thought back about why we ended up there, they invited us. And we've never been invited to a neighborhood before. No one's hmm. ever said, hey, why don't you bring yours to us? And you so might want to think about that, Tina. Getting people to invite me? Split places. Yeah. Sure. I get, Mike and I get invited to fancy places all the time. You're just starting to get invited to places. I don't well, think you're Green Street's not that fancy. <laughs> well, let me ask you, for people who don't have any idea what we're talking about, for people who have never been to this great event called Start on the Street in Worcester, what is this? It is Central Massachusetts' largest arts and music festival. It's a free festival that uh, has about, uh, see, this for this spring event would be about 170 artists. In our fall event, you have about 300. Okay. They line the streets. We have free kids' activities. We have a food court. We have two stages that Gabe is running uh, for the first time in mm-hmm. spring. And it's just really a celebration of art, music, performance, um, your neighborhoods, your city, and the people in it. And so this is a thing where you walk down the street and there's like artists with booths and they have their art and you can look at it, you could buy it, you, you can, can talk to it, the artists. You can buy it, you can talk to the artists, you can talk to crafters who are actually making things on uh, mm-hmm. on the street, who are producing their work. Uh, so yeah, you can and you can interact. You can interact with the people in your neighborhood or the people in a new neighborhood yeah. and these artists and also your food vendors. Uh, we have vegan food. We have, I mean, we have every type of food imaginable. And then we have every type of performance imaginable pretty much without people being naked. I want to ask Gabe about that. Yeah. Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> what what is the what tell me about the tell me about the stages of the performance angle. Um well, there it first started there was going to be one stage in the street and that is still there. There's there's a stage at the corner of Winter Street and Green. Okay. And um and then we were walking the street one day and there is a stone foundation at the corner of Ash and Green, huh. um, where there used to be an African market, and they, okay. um, 
aftermarket closed about maybe like a year ago or so. Yeah. Uh, tore the building down, but the foundation still exists. Okay. And one of the things I've always loved about Start in, is that Start kind of takes advantage of the environment that it's in. You know what I mean? And, and you know, whether it's putting things on side streets, taking advantage of the streetscape on Park Ave or whatever, um, I thought to myself, well, look at the top of this foundation. Why can't we put music 15 feet high hmm. on top of this foundation? This and, is like overlooking the street. Yeah, overlooking the street. And um, that's that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. The business owner, the, the, the property owner, Alan Fletcher, was yes. very gracious in uh, hmm. carving out. He has an urban garden, much like yours, but it's okay. it's huge, and it leads right up to this, this foundation hmm. that we're going to put performers on and he has graciously like mm-hmm. given us a guideline in which to walk and uh mm-hmm. has helped us clean up the space and so yeah it's gonna be really neat mm-hmm. cool and what kind of what kind of bands are they gonna do well um let's see on that stage there's gonna be a lot of singer songwriters because it's gonna be a very very small stage there's going to be a gentleman um who dresses up in uh, 18th century and 18th century clothing um and uh, plays Bach songs, plays Bach concertos. Tell him what his name is. Uh, it's uh, the name of the act is in glove with Bach. Oh, this is uh, is this Joe, Joe to George. Joe to George. Also from Harry and the Potters. He's also from Harry Wizard and the Potters. Wizard rock star. I didn't know that. Yes. Okay, all yeah. right. <clears throat> and um, and what it is is that he plays the same thing through a, a, a few times, but every time he plays it through, he puts on a larger glove. <laughs> so. <coughs> You know, I, it, it turns yes. into something different by the end of it because he's playing it with giant hands. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. So all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. And uh, we're entering into a new venture. Um, but you sort of had mentioned something earlier about crime, but and I'm going to go to the opposite end of that. We okay. are partnering with uh, the sheriff's department. Okay. So Lou Evangelitis has his community impact program. So it's prisoners pre-release who are going uh, out, and they're going to come to, us to the street tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's Friday. They're going to come to the street tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., and they're mm-hmm. going to clean all of our parking lots. Okay. And we're going to give them lunch, and we're going to tell them about Start, and it's a way to reintegrate them into the community, give okay. them some job skills, okay. um, and then sort of have them, like, part of it is taking pride in the area that they're working in and taking pride in their city and sort of hmm. giving them. So we're excited to be, to partner with them to get something that we need, which is some help cleaning some of these kind of urban tough areas yeah. and then for them to also have an opportunity to come out and do that and then be part of like some community activity so that's a this is new for us we just uh we just brought them in you know for this event so. yeah how big an how big an organization is start now you guys we're a whole 11 people <laughs> we got we got some new ones <laughs> we lost a couple they, um they jumped me in <laughs> yeah they jumped me in that's how i got involved they, uh, awesome yeah they jumped me in it was awful awesome yeah, yeah. so you have questions about Start, Brendan? Brendan is just sitting here playing with his playing with edged answers. weapon. Yeah, I'm good. You don't have any questions. I really don't. I think they're all answered. I don't know. Anyway, I'm really excited that things are moving to, and that you're trying, that things are going to happen in a new neighborhood, a new spot. We don't want to be boring. And, and, and we, like I said, we, there's nothing anchoring us anywhere. Mm-hmm. The only reason Park Ave is perfect for us is because it's such a huge space and it gives us green space with the Elm Park and that sort of thing. But I, I think that, you know, we'll give us a couple of years on Green Street and then we'll take, maybe we'll take suggestions from the public for the next area that they would like to see start in the street crop up. So come down, uh, 11 to 5, Green Street. Come have some fun. Bring your kids. We have tons of free kids activities. And I just, I think in general, it's just a really awesome community event. And that's why we do it. I love starting the street. We're actually going to have, uh, we're, we're partnering with one of the artists, one of the exhibitors there. We're going to be handing out Happiness Pony, free copies. Any back issue you want, we're probably going to have it there. you got friends who've never read this great newspaper. This is your chance to get some free copies of Happiness Pony. We'll talk about starting the street a little bit here more at the end, but I want to talk about, oh, uh, the person who's doing a new radio show on WCUW called Wormtown Ska posted a bunch of comments on Facebook about this. If you post your events on our Facebook page as like posts, I'll take them down. But if you just constantly comment and harass me about your event, whether it's beer pong or Wormtown Ska, we'll totally talk about it on the show. <laughs> Wormtown Ska, it's a radio show. Check it out. Uh, what else happened this week? I saw what kind of pe- music did they play, Mike? What? What kind of music did they play? Ska. All right. Um, I saw. Sure paying attention. <laughs> what the? Well, is there anything on your radar this week? No. It's, All right. Not really. <clears throat> it's been a kind of grim week. 
What do you mean, Grim? It's yeah. getting all stabby in the city. There's a lot of crime going on. There's a lot of crime. Going on. You know, I, I, Nicole Apostola posted the best blog post today about this. I want to. I want to. I just want to run through a couple of her stats that I thought were just interesting. She was looking at. Um, According to the Telegram and Gazette, I guess, the number of uniformed Worcester police officers is down 11% since 1998. Also down 11% since 1998, according to the Federal Uniform Crime Reporting Statistics, is violent crime in Worcester. And down 24% since 1998 is property crime. And I don't know how much of this is anything. I think, I mean, she points out, and I think this is interesting, that like, what do you what do you make of crime statistics exactly? How much of them are just completely made up? How much of them are helpful? I don't even know. No, they're really not. Yeah, I mean, because you have to look at the the, the communities where the crime uh, originates from, and if it how how it uh, you know spreads out outside of those communities and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but you know, in, in Worcester is an interesting case because it's always perception, right? I mean, the, if you listen to the people that complain about crime in the city, uh, yeah. you would sound that the, you would think that we live in a war zone, and it's yeah. it, it's an insanely safe place. Like when crime happens, like it has recently, it's kind of troubling, not because there's a lot of it but because it comes in a wave and yeah. for me it gets it's more of a bummer not because like people are getting injured or whatnot because you know what's coming right behind it and that's going to be like these crazy you know uh, calls for martial law i mean we, yes. have, we, have, we have to activate the national guard because you know people are getting stabbed with our less than 3.5 inch pocket knives yes. uh, throughout the city <laughs> it's um yeah i mean it's we still live in, in a city and you know civilization is one of those things that uh isn't always uh Wine yeah. and roses. I tell you, I wish we could get good crime statistics because I feel like without crime statistics, it's just a matter of like anecdotal stuff or personal experience. Like I've lived in Worcester for ten years. I walk the streets day yeah. and night, drunk and sober, and I've never had any no. interaction. So my perception is that Worcester is the safest place in the entire right. world. But if I had been mugged one time during those ten years, I know that I would be singing a very different tune, and I would think Worcester is the most dangerous place in the world. God forbid if I had been mugged well, twice in those ten years. So who? Is, so wait, without without the st- without mm-hmm. statistics, I don't even know but the, how we the can talk about. The statistics are kind of easy. I mean, you can look at raw numbers. The problem okay. is trying to figure out the context of each one of those crimes okay. and whether or not they're related or if they're just one-off events. I mean, it's I think it's easy for someone to pick up uh, the Telegram Gazette. Uh, and see, you know, the uh, headline, the police are investigating three stabbings in the course yeah. of 24 hours. And if you're the kind of person like, who has never uh, felt threatened uh, or maybe feels threatened just by, like, anyone who isn't you, you may think the end of the, end of the world is, is coming. But I mean, we're in a city of 200,000 people. For the, the potential for six individuals uh, to come across one another and in pairs decide that... All oh, right, oh, we're about to be ice cream person. Oh, <laughs> Totally took off on us. Oh, the ice cream truck is going down the side. The, um, but I mean, the, the, the likelihood in a city of 200,000 people for two people to come together <clears> and decide, <throat> one decide that they would like to stab the other, really isn't that crazy, right? I mean, it doesn't justify bad behavior, but just based on the law of averages, like there's always going to be a crazy person with a knife. Yes. Or, or an axe. Yes. That's yeah, the case exactly what I was thinking. But um, yeah, no, I mean, so it's the context that's also. The key important. is to know what kind of situations you know, would get you involved with a crazy person with a knife and... Avoid them. And avoid them. Yeah. And it's not hard to do <laughs> no, that, right? No, I mean, it, and still be well engaged with the city. Again, like you mentioned, I mean, you walk everywhere. I mean, there, I, I see you walking around the city all the time, right? Yeah. I mean, if there was anybody sitting on this roof right now who uh, would be likely to, to be covered with bullet wounds uh, or stab wounds or whatnot, it would be you. But and do you walk around at 3.30 in the morning with your iPod in and, like, your I have. cell phone but out? You know, and the other thing worse. is... He's walking around at 3 o'clock <clears throat> in the morning with giant construction he- he- I used to, to always have giant construction. Like, I, this is the thing, though. Is like I, so I always read these police press releases, right? Yeah. And so much of the time, it's like, oh, there was a shooting at the corner of Pleasant and whatever. Yeah. Pleasant and Piedmont or something. And it's like, oh, I was walking by there yesterday at exactly the same time as it happened today. You know, like, right. so it's not even like, yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to just, I mean, there's plenty of crimes that are happening in the city, I guess, at least from my reading of the police press releases that are not like somebody was in a dark alley, you know, with their, with a blindfold on or something. Right. I mean, right. you know, it's, it's okay. anyway. I know personally, I feel incredibly safe in Worcester. <clears throat> I, you Me know, too. Me I, too. I really do. And I work at Clark and, uh, you know, I live in North, I live in North Worcester. I mean, I never really ever feel uncomfortable walking around yeah. either of those places. Yeah. So, yeah. but there's also a level of confidence. I think that people who are comfortable in the city have when they're walking around, yeah. that you're just, you're, it's your city. You're yeah. part of it. You know, you're not looking over your shoulder and, you know, I mean, I've walked with you. You're very confident in, you know, walking. Yeah, yeah. So. I want to. I, do I want to bring something up and then ask Gabe about this? Like, this is a thing where 
I know that there's a lot of people concerned who feel concerned about their safety in the city. Mm-hmm. And I don't understand it, and I want to understand it, because I don't want to just be like, people are dumb. Because I don't think it's that people are dumb. But I think about, like, the common. People yeah. always talk about how dangerous it is to walk around the common. And it never has... That seemed like the least dangerous place to be. Yeah. But you I, live right there. I think it's... Um, I think I think there's a fear factor to it, that, that um, people see maybe people that they're not familiar with, maybe the fact that... that there's th- a lot of people who are like high on the common. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are high on the common. Um, I, 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 th- I think that people um, I'm trying to f- figure out how to put it. Uh, they, they, they think that that there's a certain element down there that will actually that, that that are dangerous and they're actually harmless. They're completely 100 percent harmless, and they don't want any problems from you. Do you know what I mean? Right. And and. They just want to do their thing, hmm. you know, because giving you a problem is going to put some light on what they're doing down there. Right. And they don't want that. Yeah. So they won't mess with you if you don't mess with them. And you can just do your thing, you know, hmm. and they'll do their thing. It's funny. I mean, there was a stabbing yesterday, on the, I think it was yesterday, on the common as well. It was either yesterday or the day before. <clears throat> okay. but, but it was a robbery. I mean, it was a mugging, right? I mean, and, I mean, mugging is not something like... The common is not a like a sanctioned mugging zone, right? A mugging can happen anywhere. I'm yes. sure there are people in Auburn who have been mugged, right? I mean, it's just I'm sure it's probably happened outside of the the Auburn Mall as opposed mm-hmm. to the rubble mall that we have. Yeah. But I mean, like the thing that's funny, and I think this is what you're hitting on, is that you know you see a bunch of people hanging out on the common during the day, and they might not look completely stable. You might wonder why does this person is this person just sitting here? Why don't they have a job? Why aren't they doing yeah. something? And the thing that's interesting is that I think people only notice that because of the lack of activity downtown. Like, I, I, I walk through Boston Common all the time, right? I mean, it's, and during the day, if you pay attention, there are far more crazy people yes. in terms of percentage, not yes. raw numbers, like all littering Boston Common than, you could, than we have in the history of Worcester. Uh, but they're, yeah. you don't notice them unless you're really looking for them because of just all the business people and the politicians hustle, hustle, and, and uh, the, the, the college yeah. students that are out and whatnot. And, you know, I was thinking about this today that if I was the city manager, which mm-hmm. I'm not, and the city should be thankful that I'm not, but mm-hmm. if I was, you know what Mike O'Brien should do? Mandate that from spring to fall, if you are a government employee, that you have to eat lunch out on the, uh, out in an open space adjacent to like your building. So city hall employees, you're having lunch, you have to be outside. It's actually a policy. Like, if it's not raining and there's not, like, a war going on, city hall employees, bring your lunch outside and be there. Because, like, as soon as people <clears throat> start showing up who don't appear crazy, then you're going to have a situation where people start feeling more comfortable. It's yeah. always, it's power number sort of thing, right? Like, everybody feels comfortable. And fo- on some level, everybody gets xenophobic. And, you know, people, the thing that conquers that is, is this are, guy. Are you going to be on the show today? <laughs> what are you What are you doing here? I'm just walking by to the... Change chapter from Little A Hi, Asa. Do you want to be on the show? I'm all right. Bro. All right. Night. All right. <laughs> Take care, man. Bye. <laughs> um. So yeah, no. That's you know, I, it would be interesting. I think if you had like, whether it be um, the folks on that work on the Front Street office or down in City Hall, there's a lot of government employees down there, yeah. or just if businesses in general just started kicking their employees out during the day, like get away from your desks and actually mm. go engage with the general public. Free idea, Mike. Take I, w- I want to bring up a I want to bring up a thing that people have been putting up on the on the internet today. I don't, maybe you guys have seen this. Other thing. than pornography. Other than pornography, this is this thing that actually totally reminds me of like these conversations of like what what can we do to like what are the simple steps to, that you can do to to, to, to make things better. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a study that's been published in the most recent um, uh, volume of Landscape and Urban Planning, which I guess is an academic journal, which found that in Baltimore. A 10% increase in tree canopy in an area is associated with a roughly 12% decrease in crime in that area. So I just look around and I'm like, this tree is preventing a crime so right the only now. You haven't been stabbed by Gabe. The only reason Asa tree. can stand there safely is because of that tree. I just think that's kind of awesome. How did they come up with that? <clears throat> how did how did they, they thought look, of that? <laughs> this has apparently been a, an argument for a long time. I guess since the early 90s, maybe, at some point, where people were like, is it better to have vegetation in an area crime-wise? And there was actually a belief among some people that, like, if there's bushes and stuff, it's just a place for criminals to hide. 
basically that was the theory <laughs> and and so this so this i guess is the first big study which is like actually or a very big study which is looking at like what is the deal here they actually found and there were a couple of spots where there were a couple of regions where they actually found the reverse that the vegetation was actually seemed to be associated with more crime and there's some theories about well these are sort of transitional areas between commercial and residential and maybe it's smaller shrubbier stuff or it's vacant lots or whatever so they're doing like a follow-up study to try to figure out is any of that a real explanation but they actually like cross correlated this with you know income and they sort of basically try to filter out anything that would make you think that like oh well people who have more money have a tree and so that's why there's less crime you know all this has been filtered out do you, do you think that there's any correlation between you make the streetscape nicer you, you put the canopies up you do that and the fact that maybe more people come outside, more people aren't walking around. Do you know what I mean? This is and the theory I think of the people who wrote the study, who, who yeah. did the study. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. I can see that. And then you take, and the more you're outside, the more pride you take in your neighborhood. Right. The true, more you're outside, true. the more you're talking to your neighbors, the more you become part of a neighborhood, the more you take pride in what that mm. neighborhood looks like and how well that neighborhood runs and is maintained. So what you're yeah. saying, Mike, is then that Nicole Apostola might be incorrect in blaming a decrease in Worcester police officers for an, a increase, increase in wait, no, so number of police officers go down, violent crime goes down. There's no... And property crime goes way down. There's no causation there, but there actually may be causation between our increase in violent crime and the influx of the Asian longhorn beetle. That very well could be. That's a good point. North Crime Worcester, is up North Worcester because could be of the Beatles. North Worcester, where we're from, we Was lost this, all our trees. I think so, it's yeah. Mark Twain. Like the secret to a successful life is knowing who to blame on your failures. Asian longhorn <laughs> beetle, Michael Bryan. <laughs> Asian longhorn beetle. That's Chief Jim, Michael Bryan. You get together. Press, you have a big presser. Asian longhorn beetle, taking it down. I love this. This is a. This the is, USDA needs to get militant. You know what this is called? This is called synergy. What happened just now <laughs> is called synergy. All came together. This is so beautiful. Wow. Um, I want to talk about other things that people can do besides go to art festivals and plant trees to make the city better. They could go to uh, Worcester Filmworks. They could go to Worcester Filmworks. What is now? What is the? I feel like when we started talking about start today, we just assumed that people knew. Uh-huh. Let's not make that same mistake. What is Worcester Filmworks? Worcester Filmworks is a group of people that uh, got together about a year and a half ago and decided that uh, we wanted to um, want to do movies outside in Worcester. Yeah. And uh, we talked about different venues. We always wanted it to be something urban. Uh, the original thought was uh, <laughs> the original thought was painting the back of the Hanover white. Okay. And having a drive-in in the parking lot behind the Hanover Theater. Yeah. Um, and that was the, that was the inspiration for the whole thing. And so a group of people got together. We decided, well, people are more likely to get together on the common. Mm. So June, July, and August, third Thursday of, uh, of every month, we do a movie on the common. Uh, we have a couple bands open up for it. We have food vendors. Uh, and the bands feel like theme, themed stuff sometimes? Sometimes. <coughs> it doesn't remember, always work like that. I just that. remember back to the future, it was a lot of 80s covers. There was uh, The Flock. Flock yeah. 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 So this happens on the Common? Yeah. On the common. Worcester yeah. Common? Yeah. Has anyone been stabbed at one of these events? No one has been stabbed. <coughs> yeah, no one has been stabbed. Uh, no, not yet. No. And I don't think it's going to happen either. No. And pe- pe- you, people, people shouldn't... bring their kids down and people everything. Like, it's kids. a whole family event. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty great. Yeah, that's the thing that I think is so great about this is that... Um, I don't know. Like, when we were kids, watching a movie was, like, a big deal. And now watching a movie is, like, you watch it on your phone. So you put your phone in the bathtub. It, it, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, you watch, right, like, right, five yeah. minutes. You watch five seconds of some hundred, two hundred million dollar movie, and you're like, I don't care. You yeah. watch another five yeah. seconds of some other movie. But people love this. Yeah. People love to go outside and, like... Absolutely. I'm, I don't. This is very important, but that guy has a boomerang, and that's far more important. A dude with a boomerang. <laughs> no, can, can, if you can hit the camera, I'll give you a dollar. Oh, shit. If you hit a guest, you owe me $10. <laughs> I, think, I think we're just going to go straight out, and it's not going to work at all. All right, so there may be a boomerang in the background. <laughs> well, I love how they're just discussing like, how to throw it. Good idea, Milliken. <laughs> do it, do it. Oh, shit. And oh, it landed in the yard, amazingly enough. <laughs> He didn't make it off the property. And that right there is why the drop bear uh, population in Australia is still so high. <laughs> so we were saying about 
Worcester Filmworks. Yeah. It's on the Common. It's the third Thursday. On the Common, third Thursday. The first one is coming up June 21st. It's, What's the uh, movie? Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, yes. Um, with uh, The Luxury is playing. Nice. Um, yeah. James Keyes is playing. Mm hmm The uh, whole thing starts at 5 o'clock. Oh, hey. Uh, yeah. And it's and it's free. That's the best part. So people, you can swing down there after work with your family? Yep. There's like, isn't there like ice cream or something? There's ice cream absolutely vendor? ice cream. There's ice cream. There's... <laughs> There's All food. That. I was at the meeting last night, and I left before they told me what the food was. But there's delicious food. There's going to be something amazing. Yeah, yeah. This well, is I mean, wonderful. the Theater Cafe came down. And again, using your area businesses, which is so important, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in, in what they're doing is the Theater Cafe, who's right down next to the Hanover, just comes over, uh, Eric's La Patisserie. I mean, yeah. so you have people, you have businesses in that neighborhood that are participating in this event, which is so important. Mm -hmm. So you should give them the rest of the lineup, too, because it's really exciting. gets really exciting. Um, June... I mean, July, I don't want to give the date. It's the third Thursday of July, but I okay. don't know the date offhand, uh, but that's Jaws. Okay. Uh, these are some nice blockbusters yeah. here. And uh, we don't have the band's book for that yet. Okay. But um, August 18th, Princess Bride. Ah. Uh, um, yes. Big Eyed Rabbit. Mm. You're going to have all these people there who know all the words. That's uh, true. You're citing along. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is going to be like that, isn't it? And, yes, uh, it is. <laughs> Big Eyed Rabbit, which is John Short's new project okay. with Duncan Arsenal and Jeff Birch, and uh, Airport, which is a band from uh, from Framingham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Is there an airport in Framingham? There is not an airport. Well, there, there is. There's the band right there. Yeah, but there's no action. I don't know. I don't Have know we ever had an air, a, a band called Airport in Worcester? Probably not. Nobody came to their shows. So that was the problem. <laughs> and on Sunday we have Start on the Street, eleven to five Green Street be so giant it will be unmissable free yeah. of free of charge yeah. buy some food buy some art i do have a question for start and yeah. this is an awful question but it's a necessary one like so if people are going to come down there where's the best place for them to park uh union station is going to be for, uh one dollar parking all day okay. so the, that's the very behind, the garage behind union, union okay. station so that and there's tons of urban parking lots around the area mm -hmm. and i think it's sort of a catch as catch come you sure. know as you can personally i think bring your bike down mm -hmm. walk public transportation library um, Library, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the All sounds well and good, but it is Worcester. I know, I know. And the thing to keep in mind, <laughs> the thing to keep in mind is we plan this event during a marathon, George a half Russell marathon. Oh, the marathon! A marathon! Is, oh, I totally forgot this. <clears throat> oh, is that this weekend? Did you forget the, to sign up again? I didn't sign up because I couldn't. I couldn't get ready. Okay. I ran it the first year. I didn't I run it last year or the year. But I'm apparent. I have been tricked by my friend who is running the marathon into being. A volunteer like marshal or something okay so if you're running i don't know if it's really you running you the marathon badge? or the half i'm getting all i'm getting a shirt or something nice. i'm gonna be standing somewhere like around salisbury street and like pointing <laughs> they're throwing the boomerang in we, we don't have any time i have to just say this without looking at the boomerang i'm gonna be like pointing the direction that you're supposed to run so if you see me out there don't say hi just keep running your race but say hi afterwards Anyway, I'm very excited about this. I, I'm not going to be running, but I'm going to be standing. Nobody ever got in touch with me, to me, with me about using my house as a watering station. Scott yeah. Schaefer definitely lied to me. Just do it. <laughs> Stand do out there it. with a hose. Do it. Spray them Make the city a better by. place. Yeah, you should just set up. <laughs> what day is it? Uh, Sunday. Oh, it's Sunday. Sunday. Oh, it's Sunday as well. Which it's is Sunday what I was morning. saying was when ah. we planned start on the street, we didn't realize that... There's going to be a marathon running through the event. Marathon, half marathon, 5K run, and a See, 1K that, fun run. That actually would have been awesome if you could have figured out a way to take like a lane of Green Street and have the marathon actually run through the event. Do you know how big Green Street is? It's that big. <laughs> We're already having a logistics <laughs> issue. You have them run down the bike lane, that 10-foot long bike lane. It's <laughs> down by the dive bar. So there's going to be a lot of activity down there, and, and I think it's very interesting because people keep saying to me, oh, do you know the marathon's happening? You know, and at any real city more than one event happens in a weekend and more than one event happens in a neighborhood in a week so we're really excited and there's an ordination at the church on temple street so there's just all this stuff going on that's going to be wow. happening in this neighborhood so it's going to be a great a great a great sunday it's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to rain saturday be. and be sunny sunday and then it's going to rain on monday so we got a good day mm -hmm. we're very happy and it's exactly the way it should be gave there should always be more than one awesome activity going on going in our city so definitely do not park in the St. John's parking lot. They will tow the hell out of you. Yes, we have, uh, we, have, we do have very clearly marked signs on Temple Street where not to park. The Hibernians, the St. John's. The Hibo didn't let you use their lot? It, they, I think they're working in conjunction with uh, the church. So, but long. they've been great. They're providing us food afterwards right. and they're helping us out. They're awesome. Okay. Um, so all the neighborhood <laughs> restaurants are going to be open. The bars are going to be open. Uh, Lucky Dog's going to have the flock, 18 plus. So I think that it's going to be a great way to get to a neighborhood that you may never have gotten into before and meet the business owners and support your local economy and buy handmade. we got to wrap up the show today. Can I, can I say one thing about the neighborhood? We don't have any time. Okay. Unfortunately. 
Gabe Rollins, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Tina Slody, Brendan Melican, Hoodlum's throwing a boomerang. I'm Mike Benedetti. Thanks for watching 508. We will talk to you next week.